Welcome to this video, which is about perfect number. Let's see the definition of perfect number. Perfect number is a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its proper divisors. Let's see another definition that is a perfect number is a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its positive divisor, excluding the number itself. That is, if we take the sum of all positive divisor, excluding the number itself, is equal to that positive integer itself. In that case, that positive integer is known as perfect number. Let's see another presentation of this definition. That is, a, a perfect number is a positive integer that is half of the sum of its positive divisor, including the number itself. If the sum of all positive divisor, including that number itself, is double of that positive integer, in that case, that positive integer is called the perfect number. Let's see some example of perfect numbers. Let's starting with 6. 6 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. So 1, 2 and 3 is the proper divisor of 6. That is the sum of 1, 2 and 3 which is 6 and which is equal to the this positive integer number 6 itself. That's why this 6 is perfect number. If we take 6 that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 which is 12. That is all the divisor including this number itself that the sum will be 12, which is the double of this number. According to the definition, in that case also, this 6 is perfect number. Let's see another example. That is number 28. Proper divisor of 28 is 1, 2, 4, 7, and 14. If we take the sum of all this proper divisor, then that will be 28. So, the positive integer 28 is a perfect number. And if we take this one 28 as a sum here, that is, 1, 2, 4, 7, 14 plus 28, which is 56. That is double of this number. So, according to that definition also, this 28 is perfect number. Then, let's see the next perfect number, which is 496. So, the proper divisor of this 496 is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 31, 62, 1, 2, 4, and 2, 4, 8. If we take sum all this number, that will be 496. So, according to the definition, so, 496 is perfect number. Now, let's see how to find any perfect number. At first, let's see Euclid's theorem. According to this Euclid theorem, if 2 to the power p minus 1 is a prime number, then 2 to the power p minus 1 times 2 to the power p minus 1 is a perfect number. That is, 2 to the power p minus 1. If this type of number, this number is prime, then 2 to the power p minus 1 times this number will be a perfect number. Let's see some examples. So, let's take the value of p here 2. When p is equal to 2, then 2 to the power p minus 1, that is 2 to the power 2 minus 1, which is 3. So, 3 is prime number. So, according to this theorem, if 2 to the power p minus 1 is prime, so we get here 2 to the power 2 minus 1 equal to 3, which is prime. So, 2 to the power p minus 1, that is 2 to the power 2 minus 1 times this value 3. That is 2 times 3, which is 6, which will be a perfect number. So, we already know that 6 is a perfect number. Now, let's see for another value of p, that is p equal to 3. In that case, 2 to the power 3 minus 1, which is equal to 7. So, in this case, 7 is a prime number. So, for the value of p is equal to 3, 2 to the power p minus 1, which is equal to 7, which is a prime number. So, according to Euclid theorem, that is 2 to the power 3 minus 1 times this 7, that is 2 to the power 3 minus 1, which will be 4, 4 times 7, which is equal to 28. According to this Euclid theorem, 28 is a perfect number. And we know 28 is a perfect number. If we take the value of p is equal to 5, in that case, 2 to the power 5 minus 1, which is equal to 31. So, 2 to the power 5 minus 1, times this 31, which is equal to 496. So, 496 will be the next perfect number. So, by the definition, we can we already proved that 496 is a perfect number. Next, if we take the value of p is equal to 7, in that case, 2 to the power 7 minus 1, which is equal to 1 to 7. This one is a prime number. So, 2 to the power 7 minus 1 times this 1 to 7, which is, will be a perfect number. That is 8128. The next perfect number of 496 will be 8128. 
So this is the Euclid theorem about perfect number. Now let's see one theorem about prime number, that is Marcellin prime. The prime number of the form 2 to the power p minus 1 are known as Marcellin prime. That is, for any value of p, if 2 to the power p minus 1 be a prime number, in that case, that number is called the Marcellin prime. Let's take the value of p is equal to 2. In that case, 2 to the power 2 minus 1, which is equal to 3. And we know, we know 3 is a prime number. So, we can call this 3 as a Marcellin prime. And if we take p equal to 3, in that case, 2 to the power 3 minus 1, which will be 7. And 7 is also prime, and as well as Marcellin prime. And if we take p equal to 5, in that case, 2 to the power 5 minus 1, which is 31. This one is prime, and as well as Marcellin prime. And the, if we take the value of p equal to 7, in that case, 2 to the power 7 minus 1, which is equal to 1 to 7. And 1 to 7 is a prime, as well as Marcellin prime. So, the prime number of the form 2 to the power p minus 1 are known as Marcellin prime. Now, let's see the next theorem, that is Euler's theorem about perfect number. If n is a even perfect number, then it is of the form n equal 2 to the power p minus 1 times 2 to the power p minus 1, where p is a prime and 2 to the power p minus 1 is a Marcellin prime. This one is very much similar to the Euclid's theorem, but here, according to this Euler's theorem, we call the perfect number as a even perfect number. So let's see some example here. If we take the value of p is equal to 2, in that case, 2 to the power 2 minus 1, which is equal to 3, this one is prime number. And in that case, that is 2 to the power 2 minus 1 times this 3, which is, will be 6, this one will be perfect number. This one is very much similar to the Euclid's theorem. But here, the Euler say that this number, that is this n, we can call perfect number, that will be an even perfect number. So, the even perfect number will be of the form, this one, where p is a prime and 2 to the power p minus 1 is much than prime. We already proved this one. That is, if we take the value of p is equal to 2, which is prime, in that case, 2 to the power p minus 1, which will be 3, that will be also prime. In that case, 2 to the power p minus 1 times 2 to the power p minus 1, which will be a perfect number, and that will be an even perfect number. So, in the next case, that is 3, which is prime, and 2 to the power 3 minus 1, which will be 7, that is Marcellin prime, and this 7 times 2 to the power 3 minus 1, that is 7 times 4, which is 28, this one is an even perfect number. Similarly, the value of p is 5, which is prime, 2 to the power 5 minus 1, which is 31, which is called Marcellin prime, in that case, 2 to the power 5 minus 1 times times 31, which is 496, this one is an even perfect number. And if we take the value of p is 7, and 2 to the power 7 minus 1, which is Marcellin prime, in that case 2 to the power 7 minus 1 times 1 to 7, which is 8128, which is an even perfect number. So this is the Euler's theorem about even perfect number. Now let's see one special function, that is the sigma function. The sigma function is defined as sigma n, which is equal to sum of all unique divisor of n, including 1 and n. That is, the sigma function is the sum of all unique divisor, including 1 and that number itself. Using the sigma function, we can define any perfect number. That is, if n is a perfect number, then sigma n equal to 2n. That is, the value of sigma n will be the double of this the number, that is 2n. So let's see some example. That is sigma n, here the 2n. Let's take the sigma 6, that is the sum of all unit divisor, including 1 and 6 itself. That will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6, which will be 12. That is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6, which is 12. And 2 times n, that is 2 times 6, which is 12. So, if this two number is equal, in that case, we can call this 6 as a perfect number. So, 6 is perfect number. Again, the sigma 28, which is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14 plus 28. That is, all the unique divisor of 28, including 1 and this 28 itself, which is 56. And, and 2 times 28, which is 56. Since this two value is equal, that is, if sigma n is equal to 2n, in that case, that n 
is the perfect number. So we can call 28 as a perfect number. Now let's see the n digit theorem. That is, all the even perfect numbers greater than 6 end in with either 6 or 8. So we know 6 is a perfect number. The next perfect number is 28. The next perfect number is 496. And the next perfect number is 8128. According to this theorem, we can easily see that the greater than 6, all the perfect number is either end with 8 or 6. 28 is end with 8. 496 is end with 6. 8128 is end with 8. Now, let's see another theorem about finding the perfect number. If n is much than prime, then n times n plus 1 divided by 2 is a perfect number. Let's see the verification of this theorem. That is, 2 to the power p minus 1. If any prime number is on in the form 2 to the power p minus 1, in that case we know that prime number is called Marstein prime. According to the definition of Marstein prime, we know 3, 7, 31, and 127 all are the Marstein prime. In that case, that is, if n is Marstein prime, that is 3 times 4 divided by 2, which is equal to 6, then 6 is perfect number. That is 7 times 8 divided by 2, which is 28. That is again a perfect number. 31 times 32 divided by 2, which is 496, is a perfect number. And then 127 times 128 divided by 2, which is 8128, which is again a perfect number. So we can call if n is a must in prime, then n times n plus 1 divided by 2 is a perfect number. Now let's see another theorem that is every even perfect number greater than 6 can be expressed as the sum of the cube of conjugative odd integers. That is, 28 can be written as 1 cube plus 3 cube. 1 and 3, 2 conjugative odd integers. So 1 cube plus 3 cube which is 28. So this is the verification of this theorem. That is, 28 can be written as 1 cube plus 3 cube. 496 can be written as 1 cube, 3 cube, plus 5 cube, plus 7 cube. The sum of the cube of conjugative odd integer. That is 1, 3, 5, 7. That is 1 cube, plus 3 cube, plus 5 cube, plus 7 cube. Which is 496. And in the case 8128, that is 1 cube, plus 3 cube, plus 5 cube, plus 7 cube, plus 9 cube, plus 11 cube, plus 13 cube, plus 15 cube. Which is equal to 8128. That is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. We know these are the conjugative odd integers. So this is the verification of this theorem. That is every even perfect number greater than 6 can be expressed as a sum of cube of conjugative odd integers. Now let's see about the newest perfect number. As this one is the continuous process that is finding the perfect number. In the January 2016, some mathematician uh, find this perfect number that is 2 to the power 7420 times 2 to the power 7420 minus 1. We know if this one is Marcin prime, if we multiply this Marcin prime number with this one, in that case that will be a perfect number. See some property of this perfect number that is the last digit of this perfect number is 9303153. 776 according to the NTZ theorem that is this perfect number is also end with 6 that is this one is the even perfect number and the total digit that is 4467235 so this perfect number is consist of this number of digit that is 4467235 now let's see one question that is about odd perfect number that is is there any odd perfect number exist question about the existence and the non-existence of odd perfect number. So finding an odd perfect number or to prove that there is no such thing as an odd perfect number, this one is a very important question and all the mathematicians of the world are searching for the answer of this question. Is there any existence of odd perfect number? 